that we often ask our young boys to make what I believe is a false choice between their masculinity and their humanity. And we do that by training them from a very young age to believe that in order to be accepted and seen as valuable as a man, that they have to fit inside of a box. I didn't realize until I was in my late 20s, early 30s, that the language that was reinforced in me to make me into a boy and then into a man was actually very sexist, chauvinistic language that made me intuitively and unconsciously not trust and dislike women. So what happens when we tell a boy to like man up and to not be a girl? We're telling a boy that being a girl is less than, that being a girl is weak. So without even realizing it, we're conditioning our boys to hate girls or to hate the parts of themselves that can be seen as girly or feminine. And that language sticks with us and it follows us throughout the rest of our lives and into our relationships, into our friendships, and into our marriages, and into the workplaces. And then we ask ourselves, well, why isn't there equality? Why aren't there as many uh, women political leaders or Fortune 500 CEOs? Well, it's because we've taught boys that they have to climb the ladder at the expense of women, at the expense of themselves, and we've taught girls that there's no place for them there because they're less than. Regardless of whether you are a boy or a girl or you identify as something else, we should be allowed to be who we are, and we shouldn't be forced into these constricting boxes that make us choose between being accepted as a man and being a full human being. There's an old saying that says, the longest distance that a man will ever travel is the distance between his head and his heart. Because as men, we're taught to sever our hearts from our heads out of self-preservation, out of fear of not being seen as man enough. And what I think we need to do is reconnect our head and our heart, not just for men, for all human beings. We have to make room for that kind of growth, that deeply spiritual, individual, intrinsic growth. That's the growth at the end of our lives that we're gonna look back on and be grateful for, because it's that growth that allows you to be present with your family, that allows you to show up fully in relationships, that allows you to apologize when you're wrong, or accept feedback when it's not fun and sit at the table when it's uncomfortable. When I first started talking about masculinity and trying to reach men, I realized that by redefining it, by creating a new box, that I would just be creating more suffering because boxes are the very thing that hurt us. This idea that somebody decided at some point in time, this is what it means to be a man and this is what it means to be a woman. And I didn't want to create a new box because I was hurt by the box. And the box doesn't just hurt men, it hurts women. It hurts people of color. It hurts gender non-conforming and trans folks. And so I realized actually in conversations with women, specifically my wife and some of the work that she's been doing around femininity, that we needed to undefine masculinity because it's the undefinition of it that can set us free.